And so the man came up to me and was like, Are you really the person? Really? <laughs> so hilarious. And that's so funny. So I told him, I said, Yeah, that's me, that's how we roll, you know. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll pay. <laughs> you can take the next one. Make any forex transfers to any bank in the world. Bank easy while chatting with Fidelity Flash Day. Enjoy awesome payment options in your Fidelity Virtual Card, LPS, M Visa, and modified transaction limits. You can also do bulk payments and many more. Enjoy a world of ease with Fidelity e Banking Services. Dial star 770 hash or download the online banking app. Fidelity Banking Online. Banking that suits your lifestyle. Stay safe. Maintain social distance. We are Fidelity. We keep our word. What's so good about Fidelity Online Banking? Hmm, let's see. Aside the fact that it's a robust self-service system with advanced cyber protection with biometric verification, it is easy to use, accessible, and convenient. You can pay bills and buy airtime. Fidelity Online Banking is built to give you a delightful banking experience. And with our new upgrade, you can now transfer foreign currency to anyone, anywhere in the world. Simply log on to Fidelity Online, input your username and password, select DOM account for transfer, click on FX transfer to designated bank, input the appropriate beneficiary bank details, SWIFT, sort code and routing number, click on make transfer, and voila, it's done. So wherever you are, wherever you go, Fidelity Online has got you covered. Fidelity Online, banking that suits your lifestyle. Download the Fidelity Online app today. Stay safe. Maintain social distance. We are Fidelity. We keep our word. What's so good about Fidelity Online Banking? Hmm, let's see. Aside the fact that it's a robust self-service system with advanced cyber protection with biometric verification, it is easy to use, accessible, and convenient. You can pay bills and buy airtime. Fidelity Online Banking is built to give you a delightful banking experience. And with our new upgrade, you can now transfer foreign currency to anyone, anywhere in the world. Simply log on to Fidelity Online, input your username and password, select DOM account for transfer, click on FX transfer to designated bank, input the appropriate beneficiary bank details, SWIFT, sort code and routing number, click on make transfer, and voila, it's done. So wherever you are, wherever you go, Fidelity Online has got you covered. Fidelity Online, banking that suits your lifestyle. Download the Fidelity Online app today. Stay safe. Maintain social distance. We are Fidelity. We keep our word. What's so good about Fidelity Online Banking? Hmm, let's see. Aside the fact that it's a robust self-service system, with advanced cyber protection with biometric verification. It is easy to use, accessible, and convenient. You can pay bills and buy airtime. Fidelity Online Banking is built to give you a delightful banking experience. And with our new upgrade, you can now transfer foreign currency to anyone, anywhere in the world. Simply log on to Fidelity Online, input your username and password, select DOM account for transfer, click on FX transfer to designated bank, input the appropriate beneficiary bank details, SWIFT, sort code and routing number, click on make transfer, and voila, it's done. So wherever you are, wherever you go, Fidelity Online has got you covered. Fidelity Online, banking that suits your lifestyle. Download the Fidelity Online app today. Stay safe. Maintain social distance. We are Fidelity. We keep our word. And so the man came up to me and was like, are you really the person? 
Really? <laughs> so hilarious. <laughs> that's so funny. So I told him, I said, yeah, that's me. That's how we roll, you know. <laughs> Don't, Don't worry, I'll pay. pay. <laughs> <laughs> you can take the next one. Make any forex transfers to any bank in the world. Bank easy while chatting with Fidelity Flashgate. Enjoy awesome payment options in your Fidelity Virtual Card, LPS, and Visa, and more. Good morning, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It is my great pleasure to welcome you all to the 32nd Annual General Meeting of Fidelity Bank PLC, which is taking place at this unprecedented time in our history. Again, the background of the COVID-19 pandemic that is currently ravaging the world and exerting an extraordinary toll on human lives and the world economy. I hereby call on Chief Benga Ido to please lead us in an opening prayer.
Please, may we be upstanding for the opening prayer. In Jesus' name. Our Father and our God, we thank you. We thank you for this institution called Fidelity Bank. For your love, for your kindness, for your mercy, for the wisdom you are giving the board, management, and staff of this company. The vision you gave them as us put on the annual report and account, drive for more. The drive can only come from wisdom within. There is no time that we need this vision more than now. The economy that produced the annual report of 2019 is a child play to what we are likely to face after this meeting. They will need the wisdom. They will need knowledge. They will need strategy. Things that they have never seen before. Things they have never done before. But you know it all, Father. You will give them. You will endow them. Inner strength to actually produce results that would despite knowledge of the Asians when the result comes out next year, when we'll be looking at it. This is what I, Father, seek today from you, to give the board, to give the management, and then life for every facet of the stakeholding of this bank that we will continue to grow from strength to strength, profit to profit, in the name of Jesus. When in the Bible, people went through battle, and Moses had to call, he started to do enumeration. At the end of the exercise, they said nothing was missing. Father, in the name of Jesus, nobody will be missing on the board. Nobody will be missing on the management and the staff. They will be around to deliver the goods. We thank you for what you have done, Itato. We are seeking and looking at your face that you give us more. And at the end of the exercise, we have full cause to glorify your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you very much. Bye. Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I will now call on the company secretary to confirm that we have a quorum. Good morning, esteemed shareholders. I have confirmed from the registrars that they received a total of 225 proxy forms, representing 41.3% of the company's paid off share capital. Consequently, I hereby confirm to the chairman that a quorum has been formed. Thank you, company secretary. I hereby declare that a quorum has been formed in accordance with Article 62, subsection 1 of the Articles of Association of the company. Please note that in accordance with the guidelines issued by the Corporate Affairs Commission, by the holding of annual general meetings by proxy, each proxy form represents one shareholder. Kindly permit me to deal with some preliminary matters before we proceed to the business of the day. Our bank is a responsible corporate citizen and concerned with the health and safety of everyone attending this meeting, most especially in this era of the COVID-19 pandemic. It is therefore important for us to brief you on the steps we have taken with regard to your well-being at this meeting. I can confirm that in organizing this meeting, 
we deployed the safety protocols advised by the government and health authorities, including provision of face masks, hand sanitizers, and hand gloves to all persons present, conducting temperature checks at all entry points into this facility, ensuring that the crowd size is within the limits stipulated by the Lagos State Government, and arranging the seating to ensure full compliance with social distancing. I also wish to inform you that we have obtained the prior approval of the Corporate Affairs Commission and other regulators to proceed with this annual general meeting by proxy. Consequently, the business to be transacted today will be limited to ordinary business as defined in Section 214 of the Companies and Allied Matters Act. To enable all shareholders to follow the proceedings, I am pleased to inform you that this meeting is currently being streamed live. I will now call on our Chief Security Officer to make a brief presentation on the procedure to be adopted by all in the event of any emergency during the meeting. Um, good morning, uh, shareholders. Please, um, if, if you don't hear today because there is no fire drill, so in, if you hear any fire alarm, be sure there is no fire drill. It is a real alarm. So if you get to hear anyone, the fire exits are your, you can see behind me, there are two ones down here, and then on my left, and to my right as well. So you must proceed, there is, a, there is an exit that will take you down to the ground floor, and then of course there is a staircase at the way you came from. If you had used the lift, please, when you hear any alarm, never attempt to use a lift. Use the staircase or use the two exits behind you. Right, if you get to the ground floor, just walk straight, and then to your right is the master point. Just be there, and then, we'll, of course, we will then take a head count um, and before we call off for a clear sign for you to come back. Now, if you need to use the restroom, you don't have any restroom right at this floor that we are. The restrooms are the first floor and the ground floor. So please, um, as to proceed, just be careful. Um, I'm sure that we'll have a, a fruitful deliberation. Thank you very much. Thank you, CSO. Thank you. I would like to take a few minutes to update you on the changes that have taken place on the board of our company since the last annual general meeting on April 26, 2019. Mr. Mohamed Balarabe, the former Deputy Managing Director, retired from the board on December 31st, 2019, upon expiration of his tenure in accordance with the bank's policy. In addition, Mrs. Chijoke Ugochuku, the former Executive Director, Shares Services and Products, completed her contract tenure on the board on March 21st, 2020. The board seizes this opportunity to express sincere appreciation to Mr. Mohamed Balarabe and Mrs. Chijoke Ugochuku for their exemplary service and wishes them the very best in their future endeavors. Thank you. On the other hand, Investors Obaro Odegi, Bola Joshua, and Hassan Imam were appointed as executive directors of the company, while Alhaji Issa Mohamed Inwa was appointed as an independent non executive director. Their appointments have been approved by the Central Bank of Nigeria, and they will be presented to the shareholders for election in the course of this meeting. 
I will now recognize the directors who are present at this meeting. To my right is the managing director, chief executive officer, Mr. Namdi Okonkwo. <clears throat> to my extreme left is Otumba Sheni Adetu, an independent non-executive director. And my name is Ernest Ebi. I am the chairman of the board of directors. <laughs> By my immediate left is the company secretary, Mrs. Ezinwa Onogoju. I will now recognize our other directors who are present by proxy and are following the proceedings from their respective locations. Mr. Alex C. Ojuku, non-executive director. <clears throat> Mr. Michael E. Okeke, non-executive director. <clears throat> Chief Charles C. Omolu, non-executive director. <clears throat> Pastor King C. Akuma, non-executive director. Mr. Chidi Abafo, non-executive director. Alahaji Issa Mohamed Inwa, independent non-executive director. Mrs. Akupi Odinkemelu, chief executive director, South Directorate. Mrs. Neka C. Onyali Ipe, executive director, Lagos and Southwest. Mr. Bolaho Joshua, Executive Director, Chief Operations and Information Officer. <clears throat> Mr. Obaro Odegi, Executive Director, Corporate Bank. <clears throat> and Mr. Hassan Imam, Executive Director, North Directorate. <clears throat> A detailed profile of all the directors can be seen at pages 25 to 35 of the annual report. I would like to acknowledge the presence of the representatives of our regulators. The Central Bank of Nigeria, Mr. Jayola Olubenga Oluwale. The Nigerian Stock Exchange, Mr. Gostheim Iweneka. You're welcome. Nigerian Deposit Insurance Corporation, NDIC, Mr. Elvis Oyakilome, who is following the proceedings from a remote location. <clears throat> Representatives of the Corporate Affairs Commission and the Securities and the Exchange Commission are not physically present, but are following the proceedings from their location. I would also like to recognize the representatives of the external auditors, Ernst and Young, represented by Mr. Jamil Olekesin. <clears throat> the registrars, first registrars and investor services limited, represented Mr. Bayo Ulugbemi. The bank's, the bank's Corporate Governance Consultants, KPMG Professional Services, represented by Mr. Tulu Udukele. <clears throat> Statutory Audit Committee, Chief Frank Omo, Chairman of the Statutory Audit Committee. <clears throat> we will now proceed to the formal business of the day by calling on the company secretary to read notice of the meeting. Company secretary. Notice is hereby given that the 32nd annual general meeting of members of Fidelity Bank PLC will be held at the Civic Center 
Uzumba Mbadiwe Avenue, Victoria Island, Lagos, at 10 a.m. on Thursday, April 30, 2020, to transact the following business, ordinary business, to receive the audited financial statements for the year ended December 31, 2019, and the reports of the directors, auditors, and audit committee thereon, to declare a dividend, to elect the following directors who were appointed since the annual general meeting, Mr. Obaro Odege, Executive Director, Mr. Golanho Joshua, Executive Director, Mr. Hassan Imam, Executive Director, Alhaji Isa Mohamed Inua, Independent Non-Executive Director. To elect the following directors retiring by rotation, Mr. NSAB, MFR, FCIB, Non-Executive Director, Mr. Michael Okeke, Non-Executive Director. To authorize the directors to fix the remuneration of the auditors, and to elect members of the audit committee. Proxy. Fidelity Bank PLC, as a responsible corporate citizen, is aware of the unique challenges posed by the COVID-19 pandemic and mindful of the need for all to take action to check the spread of the virus. To this end, the bank had earlier activated its, its internal COVID-19 response plan, in addition to implementing the safety measures recommended by the government and health authorities. To ensure the safe conduct of a 32nd annual general meeting in accordance with the guidelines issued by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control and the Corporate Affairs Commission, shareholders are hereby notified that attendance shall only be by proxy and shall be limited to a maximum of 20 persons, the maximum crowd size currently permitted by Lagos State, the host city for the meeting. In view of the foregoing, shareholders are encouraged to appoint proxies to represent them at the meeting. A member entitled to attend and vote at the annual general meeting may appoint a proxy to attend and vote in his, her, or its stead. A proxy need not be a member of the company. A blank proxy form is attached to the annual report and can be downloaded from the bank's website. To be valid, the completed and duly stamped proxy form should be emailed to info at firstregistrarsnigeria.com or deposited at the office of the registrar, First Registrar and Investor Services Limited. Plot 2, Abebe Village Road, Igomu, Lagos, not later than 24 hours before the meeting, dated the third day of April 2020, by order of the board. I crave your indulgence to refer you to the notes, to the notice. Good morning again and welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Company Secretary. I wish to advise that the Register of Directors Holdings and other statutory registers are available for inspection in accordance in compliance with section 275 subsection 8 of the Companies and Allied Matters Act 2004. I will now proceed to read the chairman's statement which is contained on pages 15 to 18 of the annual report and accounts for the financial year ended December 31st, 2019. Thank you very much, thank you. The managing director's report and the report of the directors are on pages 19 to 23 and 38 to 49 respectively of the annual report and accounts. Shareholders are enjoined to read these reports for more insight into the bank's activities during the year. We will now proceed to the first item on the agenda, which is to lay the audited accounts before the meeting in accordance with the provisions of Section 345 of the Companies and Allied Matters Act 2004, I hereby lay the audited, I hereby lay the audited financials of the company for the financial year ended December 31st, 2019 before the shareholders. 
I will now call on the representative of the auditors to present the auditor's report for the financial year ended December 31st, 2019. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and the representative of the shareholders. I would like to read the auditor's report, which can be found on page 113 to 117 of the annual report. With the permission of the Mr. Chairman and the representative of the shareholders, I would like to read the opinion as well as the report on other legal and regulatory requirements on page 113 and 117 respectively. Independent auditors report to the members of Fidelity Bank PLC. The opinion. We have audited the financial statement of Fidelity Bank PLC, the bank, which comprised the statement of financial position as of 31 December 2019, and the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income, statement of changes in equity, and statement of cash flows for the year then ended, and notes to the financial statements, including a summary of significant accounting policies and other explanatory notes. In our opinion, the accompanying financial statements present fairly in all material respects. The financial position of the bank as of 31 December 2019 and its financial performance and its cash flow for the year that ended in accordance with the international financial reporting standards as issued by the International Accounting Standards Board and the relevant provisions of the Companies and Allied Matters Act, Cap C20 Laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004, the Banks and Other Financial Institutions Act, Cap B3 Laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004, the Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria Act No. 6, 2011, and the Central Bank of Nigeria Circular. Report on other legal and regulatory requirements. In accordance with the requirements of Schedule 6 of the Companies and Allied Matters Act, Cap C20 Laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004, we confirm that, one, we have obtained all information and explanations which to the best of our knowledge and belief were necessary for the purpose of our audit. Two, in our opinion, proper books of account have been kept by the bank in so far as it appears from our examination of those books. Three, the bank's statement of financial position and statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income are in agreement with the books of account. In compliance with the banks and other financial institutions act, Cabit the laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004 and circulars issued by the Central Bank of Nigeria, we confirm that one, related party transactions and balances are disclosed in note 37 of the financial statements in compliance with Central Bank of Nigeria circular BSD 1 2004. Two, returns on customers' complaints are disclosed in note 40.2 to the financial statements in compliance with Central Bank of Nigeria circular PDR slash DIR slash CIR slash 01 slash 23. As stated in note 40.1 to the financial statement, the bank paid penalties for contraventions of certain sections of the banks and other financial institutions at Cabit 3 
loss of the Federation of Nigeria 2004, and relevant central bank of Nigerian circulars during the year ended 31 December 2019. Signed by myself, Jami Olaki son, and dated 6th March 2020. Thank you. Thank you very much, our external auditors represented by Jamil. I will now call on the chairman of the statutory audit committee, Chief Frank Ong, to read the committee's report contained on page 50 of the annual report and accounts. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, directors, dear shareholders, uh, I want to read the uh, report of the Statutory Audit Committee to uh, members of uh, Fidelity Bank for the year ended 31st December 2019. In compliance with Section 359, Group 6, of the Companies and Allied Matters Act, CAP, C20, LFN, 2004. We reviewed the scope and planning of the audit requirements and found them adequate. Reviewed the financial statements for the year ended 31st December 2019 and are satisfied with the explanations obtained. We reviewed the external auditor's management report for the year ended 31st December 2019 and are satisfied that management is taking appropriate steps to address the issues raised. Are certain that the bank has complied with the provisions of the Central Bank of Nigeria Circular ESD 1 2004, dated February 18, 2004, on disclosure of insider credits in the financial statements of banks. In addition, related party transactions and balances have been disclosed in the notes to the financial statements for the year ended 31 December 2019, in accordance with the prescribed CVN format. Are certain that the accounting and reporting policies of the company for the year ended 31 December 2019 are in accordance with legal requirements and agreed ethical practice. The external auditors confirm having received full cooperation from the company's management and that the scope of their work was not restricted in any way. Signed by myself. Chief Frank Ong as Chairman Audit Committee and uh, the, the following other members, Dr. Christian Winier, member, Mr. Innocent Moore, member, Mr. Mike, Michael Okeke, member director, Mr. Alex Ujuku, member director, Alaji Isa Inwa, member director. Thank you. Thank you very much. Chairman, Statutory Audit Committee. In line with the provisions of the Central Bank of Nigeria's Code of Corporate Governance for banks and discount houses in Nigeria, which stipulates that an annual board appraisal exercise should be conducted in each financial year, and the report of the appraisal should be presented at the annual general meeting, KPMG advisory services are appointed to conduct the board appraisal for the year ended December 31st, 2019. I will now call on the representative of KPMG to read the board appraisal report on page 110 of the annual report and accounts. KPMG. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I present the report of the independent consultant to the Board of Directors of Fidelity Bank PLC on the appraisal for the year ended 31st December 2019. In compliance with the guidelines of Section 2.8.3 of the Central Bank of Nigeria Revised Code of Corporate Governance for Banks in Nigeria Post Consolidation and the Securities and Exchange Commission Code of Corporate Governance, Fidelity Bank PLC engaged KPMG Advisory Services to carry out an appraisal of the Board of Directors for the year ended 31st December 2019. The CVN Code mandates an annual appraisal of the Board which respects, with specific focus on Board structure and composition, responsibilities, processes, and relationships individual director competencies and respective roles in the performance of the board. We have performed the procedures agreed with the Fidelity Bank in respect of the appraisal of the board in accordance with the provisions of the CBN code and SEC code. These procedures, which are limited in, in scope but sufficient for the board's objective in line with the codes, are different in scope from an external audit. Consequently, no opinion is expressed by us on the activities reported upon. Our approach to the appraisal of the board involved a review of the bank's board papers and minutes, key corporate governance structures, policies, and practices. This included the review of the corporate governance framework and representations obtained from questionnaires, interviews with the members of the board, and senior management. On the basis of our review, the bank's corporate governance practices are largely in compliance with the key provisions of the CBN code. Specific recommendations for further improving the bank's governance practices have been articulated and included in a detailed report to the board. This includes recommendations on succession planning and board gender diversity. Signed, Olumide Inka partner KPMG Advisory Services, FRC 2013, ICANN, 4 to 7, 5th March, 2020. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We will now take your questions or comments on the audited report on accounts for the 2019 financial year. Kindly state your full names before making your comments. Thank you. I'll start with Madam. Banks' assets move up by 23% during the course of the year. The profit for the year is up by 24%. To top it off, the double growth is saving deposit for six years running. All this I commend the bank for. I also want to I also noted the spread and the quality of our donations, which actually, if you run through the list, it touches on all aspects of giving out. 
when you talk of sickle cell, you talk of orphanage, you talk of education, we actually did very well by touching all of them. God will continue to sustain us. Mr. Chairman, uh, on the page 191, note 19, talking on the mandatory deposit with the Apex Bank, that's note 19.1. Page, page 191, note 19.1. Mr. Chairman, my observation on this is that given the situation, the, the global industries find themselves as we speak, I'm of the opinion that the CBN should, as a matter of urgency and importance, review this, this uh, deposit policies. It is very, very important, sir. On page 188, note 6, the Treasury Bill and other investment securities held under amortized costs, they are reduced. And equally, the income from this amortized security to have reduced. What is the reason for this, sir? On page 191, note 9, there is an increment in the commission income of all the items under this note. The only exception is the traveler's check and foreign bills. Mr. Chairman, what can we do to reverse the trend so that these two items too will bring in income for us? Mr. Chairman, again, I noticed that there is no breakdown of all this increase for us to be able to appreciate what we are even talking about. Mr. Chairman, on page, uh, page 191, note 9. 191, note 9. Yes, note 9. There is a reduction in our forex gain. My question is, how can we better manage this for bigger and better income from that aspect. On other operating income, sir, what are the components of this other operating income? It's just lumped off together. What are the components? Mr. Chairman, I'm so happy when I saw the EPS basic and diluted which is the basis for the dividend we are earning today. I simply want to say we should keep this up. Then I want to go to page uh, 199, the loan and advances to customers. This portfolio have increased by 32%. What are we doing to make sure the loan did not go bad and what are we doing to recover the bad loans? And how much have we been able to recover? Mr. Chairman, I want to do it on contravention. Contravention actually showcases the image of any company. And I want us to do everything within our possible best to avoid them. It shows and speaks a lot of things. When we keep on paying contravention year by year, it's not good for us. Uh, Mr. Chairman, lastly, on page 237, note 40.2.
Boniface, relax. 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 On our customer complaint mechanism, Mr. Chairman, there's a significant increase this year, about 81%, considering the involvement, the amount involved, and the status. I want to know what is the status of the unresolved ones and the time frame allowed to resolve them by the regulators. And on our fraud and forgery rates, how much of them are staff-related was? Thank you for the opportunity, Mr. Chairman. My name once again is Salah Jakudai. The bunny face, please. The microphone. Mr. Chairman, today, because of the pandemic and situation we are in, that is why this hall is not crowded. And as such, we must limit ourselves not to be, you know, take the whole time here. The situation we are in, we are on the war front. And as such, we need to get out from where the bullet is flying, because we don't know where it's coming from. So we don't want to stay here, and that's why I say people stay at home. The road has not been open, but we thank God for the management and wisdom, the board, be able to give us a pass. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been here today. So we need to comply with that directive. All the meetings we have attended, we don't spend time, because this is not time for all this materialized and putting accounts and odds and that, you know. God keeping us alive by next year, we can trust things out, you know. This is an emergency situation, and that's what we're in today. Mr. Chairman, I want to commend the bank for this superlative performance for this year. If you're looking at performances highlight on page 10, the chairman is a superb. This account was also that last year went to recession and we were able to come out with 30 billion before tax and 28 billion after profit and you know. It's a, it's a good one. I know that some banks or companies cannot be able to propose 20 cobo. Even the other banks have, in the last six years or thereabout, who are not even proposed dividend, are coming out 25 cobo today. We look at here, Fidelity is paying 20 cobo. For us, it's a good one. Compare what we have last year. This is an excellent performance that we should commend you. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I want to also applaud our SY, DMD, and Executive Director. Ms. Chizio Gugutuku has served very well. She started here as a youth copper. And that's why dedication is very, very important when you find yourself in your organization. And loyalty. And commitment. And that's why the bank employ her after her service. And she will remain to grow from the ladder and become executive director. What else is one looking for? And I want to commend her and the bank where she served. And I wish her well in her future endeavor. DMD as well. This clearly shows that this bank is bank. Look at the demonstrator, the directors coming in today. They're not from other region. They have spread. This is national bank and I think I want to commend you for keeping that spirit. Mr. Chairman, my also worry, like I just stated, is this CBN reserve. We have about 43.346 billion mandatory reserve on 179, that page. CBN should be able to pay interest on those money. But today, I know that I'm urging the banks, but federal government are looking look at to borrow. But approval of a loan is a priority to the board. Your regulators should not force you. If the government wants to approach you to borrow a loan, they must seem to qualify and provide all the necessary documents which the board will veto, credit department will veto for giving approval. No CBN should coerce you to come and give out loan. When it goes bad, they come bad on you and make provisions. And that's why we have been de deprived a lot of things today. Mr. Chairman, if you're going to income cost resolutions, 
banking cost resolutions. We paid 10.7 million billion to Ancom. That means in the last two years, Mr. Chairman, we have paid almost 19 billion to Ancom. And who made the appointment? Federal government. Who made the ANCOM? Federal government. So this is how time the ANCOM should wind up its operation. If they cannot sustain, if the federal government cannot sustain them, ANCOM should look elsewhere to find its operations, not on the banks. If you have this money today, see, we can completely pay one naira for shareholders as dividend. The bank does not make appointment to those who sit at the ANCOM board. It's the federal government. They bring people anywhere to become chairman, MD, or this and that. And at the same time, the bank will fund them. Monkey the war, baboon the chop. That is not how to run the economy, to run a country. They should look elsewhere and get their money funded. NDIC, we paid how much? Close to almost $8 billion. The NDIC in the last two years. Mr. Chairman, these are the things we need to guard against. Today, somebody is talking about contravention. We pay eight million. Contravention, yes. See, be to part the money because you don't argue with them. Mr. Chairman, when you were there, nobody argue because the money is in their vote. By the time you come back, they have debited you. Even things that is explainable, they will debit. You can't run the economy like this. There are things you can reprimand institutions. Don't do this again. Next time, we we'll penalize you. You give warning. It is not everything you debit, even when you want to explain genuinely. Mistake is bound to occur when you are in terms of you're doing business. Except you deliberate. See, you have to look at these things. You don't go part of the money. I don't think it happens in the other world, part of the world. The way CBN debit banks. Find contravention, this and that. That is not good for us. Today, a lot of corporate entities are donating money here and there. Palliative. The government are not distributing those money to them. Whom this money are meant for? They say it's not for palliative. I know how much this bank have donated. Corporate entity. Those money are not funded to big hospital for us. And that will run here test later. Today, first, fidelity is in the forefront. I can see here in page 44 and 45 how much you are giving out, throw out to societies, including physical buildings, including borehole water, there are etc. etc. all the jobs or the zones. So, Mr. Chairman, I think we need to appoint a committee that way, when you do donations, you don't give to government. If it's a hospital, identify in each zone and build a hospital and donate. We'll be seen physically instead of giving this cash to the government. At the end, they divide it to do something else instead of going down to the people. We should not be encouraging that. At all, at all. I want to commend the Lagos State Government for what this man has been doing. Initially, when he started, was I think this man has not got his bearing. But today, I think he's number one in the country, the way he's going. This pandemic has shown who is truly a leader. The way he responded, the way he addressed the Lagos State he presided over, has shown that someone will know what he's doing. And this is a first timer, not even a second time governor. And most second governor are not doing such. And this is what we are seeing here. Leadership is key to this country. Chairman, you have provided a leadership. And this bank has been going to trajectory from strength to strength. It's what is this what about? And then they came, it's, it's been conquering. It's been paying higher dividend for its previous. So, Mr. Chairman, we have to keep it up. Having said that, Mr. Chairman, for us to live here, in all performances, this bank have done excellently well. I am a, I'm a, I'm a customer of this bank. And I go to branches, when I have a problem, I call them GMD. Even if it's outside, he will respond, I'll call somebody else. A shareholder is here, what is going on there? That's how leadership is. We we'll go there to find out, if they are not doing well, we we'll caution them. I'm a, sh a shareholder, I'm a customer. I want to earn my dividend. Sit up. It's not only my to do that. I do that as a customer and as a owner of the company. It's my company. 
So I touch every shareholder too. When you go to branch, something wrong, call them to order. Not only my to do that on the board. We are high on the board. In view of this, is, Mr. Chairman, I want to commend you for this financial year. We have done excellent work. But then I don't want to see what's come for next year. We we'll have to think about this year. Would it be possible next year? <laughs> the future will tell. Pandemic is there. All year barrier is down. We may not get to think about next year. But if God willing, we may get it or we may not have. In all, I bless this campaign for what we doing. Thank you and God bless. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, in line with uh, your opening uh, remark or statement that um, we should be mindful of time uh, uh, we spend here, I'll just take the last question, if you don't mind. You know, I think there is the... Okay, let me... I have to defer to... Good morning, the Chairman, members of this erudite board of directors of Fidelity Bank. My name is uh, Chief Timothy Adesinyo, the patron of Nigerian Shareholder Solidarity Association, established, established in 1985 by the late Akintode Asalu of blessed memory. I will start by appreciating this bank, Fidelity Bank, for the palliative which you have paid us or which you have proposed in the sum of 20 cobra, which you call dividend, but because of the time it is coming, we regard it as palliative to shareholders, and we thank you for it. We appreciate the fact that uh, all your indices are positive, but we thank God they are positive not in the coronavirus way. And it is bringing us something to make us comfortable. I appreciate the fact that the bank has been able to earn a total interest income which rose by 15.8% to 182.3 billion from 157.8 billion last year. Also, profit before tax increased from 28.4 billion to 30.4 billion which is an increase of 21%. Uh, Non-performing loan ratio has been drastically reduced from 5.7% to 3.3%. And liquidity ratio of 35%, whereas we are expected to be on just 30%. But we have built a strong bank and we are now 35% liquid. The capital adequacy ratio has been on 18.3%, etc., etc. The continuous improvement of process planning and improvement cannot go unnoticed as we have now again introduced an automated system to optimize internal processes, which makes it possible to achieve double-digit growth for the sixth consecutive year. Digital lending products have picked up 82% of our customers now transact on electronic banking channel and 47% of customers now enrolled on internet banking products. We appreciate the innovative way the bank is progressing, and we are always jealously copied 
by other banks. I will draw your attention to page 196, which is the cash, cash balances with the CBN. These cash balances stand at 453.4 billion. And uh, to our amazement, just recently, the central bank debited all the banks with 1.4 trillion for some uh, contravention. And this is uh, making our own bank to be debited for 32.1 billion. We appeal to the central bank to please don't join our sovereign at this time of coronavirus. We already have the one we are battling with, but to put it physically on our finances again is ungodly. And we are appealing to you to please tender justice with mercy and consider that this is the only source of income which we have. We also, I, we all, I also want to comment on uh, the board committees. I notice that uh, the board committees on uh, the board committees on page uh, 61, we have just five committees. But I observe that we don't have a nomination committee. And in this year, we have uh, we have another uh, new director, non-executive, independent, who has nominated them when we do have a nomination committee. And uh, I welcome the three new executive directors and thank the outgoing ones for the, fee, fee, for the services they have rendered you to the bank. And I am telling or appealing to the new directors to notice the way the bank has been progressing and to join suit by making the bank more profitable in their own time. Thank you. God bless you all. Thank you very much. I would like to, uh, um, I had said the last question, but no way. I have to add uh, to Chief Nona, uh, I will, to uh, give us his uh, comments, and then we close. The chairman, members of the board, and very distinguished fellow shareholders, both present, and those of them at the comfort of their homes. Uh, Chairman, let me say that um, when last year the bank announced an initial dividend of 22 kobo, and then suddenly put the car in reverse in terms of dividend, uh, I was expecting that this year uh, you will surpass the 22, that you will surpass the 22 cobo that was uh, earlier announced, that was for 2018. Uh, but since that is not the case, uh, and realizing that the amount that you are proposing this year is two cobo short of 22, uh, one of the things I'm going to do after this meeting is I will calculate the holdings and I'll multiply it by two cobo and I'll send the debit note to the MD, and I'm sure that he will pay from his own dividend. Uh, but talking seriously, uh, I want just to point out a few things in this account. 
uh, yes, you are paying dividend. But my understanding of investment in the capital market is that we must constantly ensure that the companies that we have invested in continue to do better. And in doing better, they're also able to reward the investors better. So that's basically going to be the basis for uh, my observations. First is on page 65. I think that there was an error. Uh, if that error is not coming from page 65, then it will be coming from page 62. Uh, Chidi was said to be a member of the board risk committee, and he attended and he attended nine meetings. But if you go to page 62, uh, he is not even a member of that committee, so I'm sure there is a mistake somewhere. So I'll be hoping that that will be corrected. Uh, the second observation that I want to make has to do with what you find on page 249. Uh, the reason that we have invested is for us to get a return. But when we begin to find unclaimed dividends run to the tune of 1.24 billion, uh, then the chances are high that the complaint that we have made of CBN will continue to come. Uh, but much more importantly is that you're also going to find some legislators uh, who think that with 1.2 billion, uh, they could also have a bite. So I'll be encouraging us as a company uh, to also see the possibility of how we can drive down these figures uh, though part of it will be going status bar uh, in the next couple of months. I also will be urging the board through the chairman, uh, looking at page 187 to 192. Mm -hmm. Our biggest strength currently is in retail banking. Sorry, sorry, the page number is... 187 to 192. Uh, 187 to 192. Uh, what, one of the things you find is that retail banking happens to be our biggest strength. And interestingly, that is where a number of banks are also hammering on. So whether we want it or not, competition is going to get stiffer in, retail, in the retail space. So I'll be urging us to look at the possibility of developing the second leg uh, of our business which I will be suggesting investment banking. Uh, because if you look at corporate, uh, corporate will give you big deposits, uh, but the chances of uh, losses are also higher. So let's look at the possibility of doing, of doing more in the investment space. Also, uh, for the future, first I've seen your first quarter results, uh, despite the lockdown, for a better part of the month of March, uh, we're hoping that uh, the picture will not be very different going forward. But in terms of presentation, because this account is basically your main instrument when it comes to marketing, I will be hoping that going forward, on page 228 to 229, talking about related parties, that you also will add the names of the related party, just like you have in the loan component. That way, the picture will be clearer for everybody to see. Also on page 226, range analysis. If you read the introduction of that segment, it talks about ranges, but what you find is only 5.5 .5 million and above. So I'll be hoping that the auditors will be helping us to expand that uh, range much more uh, to also have figures attached to them. I want to say that on an occasion like this, uh, having read the chairman's statement, uh, 
One of the things that as an investor, and I'm sure quite for a number of investors will be interested in, is strategies that we have put in place to be able to overcome the challenges that, will, that are here already. Yes, I will not be expecting that you list those strategies uh, one by one because you are in competition with other banks. But I will be wanting you to give assurances that our strategies are one that you expect will work. Uh, so at the dividend that we are talking about this year uh, will not be stagnant. And that the performances of the company or the bank itself uh, will also be better. On the closing note, Mr. Chairman, I want to urge you that effort must be made to see the possibility of decrowding Broad Street. Uh, every time there is a major transaction between the Bureau of Change and CBN, uh, the human traffic there becomes a roadblock that road users themselves find it difficult. So it's something that we must also look at uh, going forward. Either we are, we are relocating that branch or we are splitting the activities of that branch uh, so we also don't cause nuisance to other road users. It's on that note that I will again be joining earlier speakers to thank the two directors who are on their way out and to also urge the incoming directors to put their best foot forward uh, because it's only in that way uh, that the aspiration of the other investors uh, will be achieved. Once again, I want to thank you for the opportunity uh, to be able to attend this meeting and also make uh, the small contribution. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Thank you for those insightful uh, comments and questions. So now having taken all the questions, I would uh, uh, give the MD to respond to some of the questions and I'll take over from there. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, wow. It's uh, loaded, starting with Hadja to Nona. But I thank you very much because this actually shows that our shareholders are watching, and that keeps us on our toes. So thank you for these very insightful comments and questions, and I'm very pleased to provide the answers. Um, okay, good. I think my, my mic was... <laughs> Okay, so I'll start with Adria. You commended the performance of the bank for Q1. Uh, thank you for your kind words. We'll continue to work hard to make sure that your bank continues to improve. Then I'll go to the second um, question. On, um, you referred to page um, 188. 120 concerning treasury bills. We all know what happened uh, in the market. So, yes, you are right. Our volumes for financial instruments at amortized cost was relatively unchanged at 118 billion. However, um, average yields on government instruments issued at primary auctions dropped significantly due to various restrictive measures that the CBN put in place. If you recall, um, 182 day T bills as of June 2019 closed at 12.7%. But by December, it had dropped to 5%. So most investors can attest to this, uh, what happened to the T bill market. So you found people who either moving to real estate or some other options. So meanwhile, we are required to keep our liquidity ratio at about 30%. So you compulsorily have to um, invest in those instruments despite the drop in prices. So that's what explained what you noted there. Um, I will then go to the question on um, drop in tra travel travel traveler's checks and foreign uh, bills. Yeah, you, you referred to that, and um, our response is that the Commission on Travelers' Checks and Foreign Bills it actually increased by over 
to close at 3.1 billion, if you look at that um, section you're referring to in 2019, up from 2.6 billion in 2018. So, but in general, though, total fee and commission income increased by about 24%. Uh, so, on account of double digit growth in, uh, across key sectors, credit related fees came in at about 125%. Trade income, 20%, and um, account maintenance fee, that is COT, as well as digital, came in at about 14% apiece. So um, that explains um, your question there. Then about FX income, the drop in FX income, I think that drop was 66.4% in 2019. This we can attribute to movement, currency movement. What do I mean? In 2018, foreign exchange uh, currency rates moved from 333 Naira to 358. Remember when you used to mark your currencies on av average of um, NIFEX and uh, the other rate? So it moved from 333 to 358 in our reporting, if you check um, the numbers. And um, whereas in 2019, it moved from 358 to 364 per dollar. So, of course, the narrowing gap in exchange rate movement simply means that your bank, you know, uh, income made from currency trading, foreign currency security trading, and so on, dropped when compared with previous years. So that explains that uh, drop. Um, th there was a fifth question that had to do with um, other operating income. I wrote that one somewhere. Uh, that's the fifth one. Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah, I just explained it. So let me go to the sixth question. And your sixth question had to do with uh, loan recoveries. Okay, so we recovered over six billion of loans and advances in 2019. Um, and these were at different levels of prudential calculations. So our loan recovery numbers for 2019 came in at 6 billion Naira. Um, by the way, I need to inform you that we, we, about three years or four years ago, had strengthened that division. Um, so that's what's uh, responsible for the increase we're seeing. But even at that, the board has set an even higher target than what you're seeing for us at our last um, uh, strategy session. So this current year, we'll strive to do better than um, 6 billion. Um, taking advantage of the strengthening of that particular division. Then you talked about contravention. Yeah, nobody uh, wants to deliberately contravene. And I assure you that our board at different committee levels have actually uh, noted this. And we are conscious of making sure um, you avoid contravention. But in this business, Sometimes, no matter how you try, you just find yourself uh, contravening. I think the important thing is to note it, just like as you are concerned. Um, in the last five years, I believe around 2013, the numbers were significantly higher at that time, somewhere around 82 million. But increasingly, it's been coming down, and the year under discussion is about 8 million. So uh, the management is constantly looking to make sure that we even have zero contravention. It's a hard push but uh, we'll continue to try. I think there was an eighth question, yes, on complaint resolution. You know, at Fidelity, we approach cons uh, uh, um, complaint resolution from one principle. A customer has a choice to bank with at least 26 other banks. He chose you. Therefore, when this customer has complaint or disagrees with something, we at least make sure that we resolve inter internally and where in some cases, maybe the customer is being unreasonable or the facts are not being put on the table. That's when you then go to arbitration, either Chartered Institute of Bankers or Consumer Protection Department of Central Bank of Nigeria. But just to answer your question, um, what we have done, because at our governance committee meetings, it's a constant agenda. So we at management have even, you know, digitized it by building a complaint resolution tracker, which becomes an ESCO agenda. 
for us to review at every um, ESCO, like every two weeks, to re uh, review unresolved complaints. That way, we stay ahead of the curve and make sure that um, it doesn't even attract a sanction if we don't resolve in time. Um, your ninth question that I wrote here, you talked about uh, fraud and forgeries. Yeah, you know, again, just like complaints, as a bank scales up operations, the risk levels heighten. And we've continued to upgrade um, our risk control mechanisms. But at the end of the day, somehow you still see that in this business, um, nobody wants to lose money, but you still report, you know, you still witness some fraud. But the good news is that most of this fraud, very significant, very insignificant percentage is attributable to maybe um, staff. So it means that we'll continue, because now with cyber fraud, it's even bigger. We'll continue to strengthen our risk management and control processes. Recently, uh, there's been a split between compliance and internal control. All of this would help, of course, as advised by the central bank, all of this would help us to track uh, things like to even stop things before they happen, not to talk of um, the after-event situation of audit. Now, your final question was on, on okay, no, that came from Nona, um, on claim dividend. Before I go to Nona's one, let me just address the issue of unclaimed div dividend. Well, in the industry, everybody knows that that has been a challenge, but uh, we'll continue to try. Um, what we do is we return all unclaimed dividends, which have been in, you know, that's the, um, the SEC requires um, the registrar of public companies to return all unclaimed dividends, which have been in their custody for 15 months and above, okay, uh, to the paying company. But what we do is that we allow five, the registrar to keep 5% of this to address issues of claims that come from time to time, while the balance 95% is invested in risk-free government securities. Because if you take everything and somebody shows up at the registrar, um, the registrar might not be able to pay. So we leave like 5% of unclaimed dividends, uh, which have stayed 15 months, and then the others are invested in risk-free investment. So I'll go to the next uh, question, which is from uh, Chief. No, no, I think it was Boniface that spoke first. Chief Boniface, thank you very much. In fact, the comments that uh, shareholders make gladdens my heart because it means that you people are actually uh, mindful of how your bank is performing. Just like Nona talked about Broad Street. That's a very strong feedback and positive one. I witnessed um, something like that on one Saturday as well and put measures in place. We have another branch at Igoshere. I think to take your complaints, what we'll do is probably upgrade what we do at Igoshere to take off the pressure from the core Broad Street or look for a way of even diverting customers to the next branch besides these two. We are going to do that, and it's something we'll implement as soon as uh, business opens fully. I like that kind of feedback. And in the same vein, I would like to thank um, Chief Boniface. There are times my phone rings, even when I'm in a meeting and I'm not picking, he sends me, he says, hey, pick your call, pick your call. Then he says, I'm at also branch. I don't like what I'm seeing. So you can see all the feedback he gave today has to do with customer service. So I'd like to thank these very observant shareholders of ours. It keeps us on our toes to know that there are people that put us in these jobs and we have to be accountable to them. Then I go to your complaints about Amcon and the CBN and CRR. This is a very important um, topic. People have argued that if we pay NDIC premium on deposit and we receive deposits that are taken away as CRR. Why then do we pay insurance on money that is with the safest bank in the country, that is central bank, the CRR? So we are aware of these things, but because it's an industry issue, we have very cordial relationship with our regulators. Even in this COVID time, we've held probably about four bankers committee meetings in the last, since the lockdown started, and we do so using technology. So that means there's an avenue for us to continue to engage the regulator on your behalf. I tell you, this topic has come up several times. We are still discussing it. Because at Bankers Committee, you have the MD of NDIC sitting there, and then you have the Central Bank Governor who chairs Bankers Committee. So I would rather we continue to take it at industry level. 
using Bankers Committee to engage our regulators on your behalf. So please be assured, on behalf of other CEOs, because we all discuss this at Bankers Committee, we will continue to engage the regulatory authorities. Thank you. Um, donations. We note your comments on donations. We've tried to make it as widespread as possible, like you rightly uh, pointed out. Now, Alaji, okay, no, Chief. Okay, Chief, thank you, sir, for your comments on dividend. Uh, we'll continue to do our best. Then on page 196, you said we do not have nomination committee. That role, you know, it's a matter of nomenclature. We have board corporate governance committee. So they play that role of a nomination committee. Indeed, if it was not happening, our governance audit of KPMG would have flagged it. So just to give you some comfort, we have that function being performed under a different nomenclature. Thank you. Then I come to um, Nona. I've talked about dividend. Yeah, you, you, you alluded to dividend that we paid last year. We already explained that mistake about 22 and 11 Kobo. So going up from 11 Kobo to 20 Kobo this year, um, we think it's significant like you rightly pointed out. But at the same time, we'll continue to try. But like I told shareholders last year, the board's philosophy has not changed. In these challenging times, we must build up capital war chest. Capital adequacy ratio, very important. We want your bank to be healthy. We want your bank to be here for tomorrow. We want your bank to keep paying dividends rather than pay one big one and drop. A good example of what capital conservation can do. When IFRS 9 was implemented, we were given four years to take the impact. But because we had conservatively built up reserves, in one year, we took a debit of 28 billion and still stayed above capital adequacy ratio. That is the kind of guidance our board insists on. Risk management, if I went chairman resumed, his, he made it very clear. Risk management, capital adequacy, liquidity, governance. It runs in our brain as directors as the key imperatives of this, this board. So when you see us pay certain dividend, we want to pay out as much as possible. But we also want to be here tomorrow to pay more. Thank you. We noted your comment on retail banking, where we are making uh, inroads, and you're suggesting we look at investment banking. I tell you the truth. Um, in the, like I, I did say, we have held board committee meetings since this lockdown, about eight of them. And we're looking at options because it's not important. Um, it's, not it's not good to wait for this pandemic to be over before we plan ahead. All we're looking at is where is the next port of call. Indeed, our treasury and our corporate bank came under serious scrutiny from directors to say this is the time for creativity. This is the time to use your treasury and your corporate bank to take advantage of investment banking-like opportunities and deepen what you're doing. I cannot give details, obviously. Um, it's, a, it's an industry of about 28 banks. <laughs> so thank you. I think I've taken everybody's questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, MD, for the response. Well, I just uh, have to make a few comments and then we continue with the agenda. I want to thank the shareholders uh, for their insightful uh, comments and questions. That is very helpful for us in our oversight function to ensure that we keep our eyes on those concerns that have been raised. This AGM, um, our observation on the regulatory induced, I think it was Boniface that raised it, the regulatory induced uh, costs that I believe is being discussed at the Bankers Committee. It's not peculiar to Fidelity Bank. I think it's an industry-wide issue, and um, I believe that um, the, that's being looked, looked into. 
And then I think Madam made the observation about increase in loans and advances. And um, if uh, we are sure that the loans will not go bad and that uh, what we are doing on recoveries, I want to assure you that, uh, like the MD said, that um, our enterprise risk management framework is very robust. We are very, very mindful of the issue of uh, non-performing loans, that if you look at uh, the uh, current account that is under consideration, you will observe that our NPL went down from 5.7% to 3.3% in the current year. So that is a clear demonstration that uh, issue of risk management is in our DNA and it will continue to remain that way. Now on the issue or other issue of, um, and also we continue to update our risk asset acceptance criteria as the market realities unfold constantly to ensure that we are not uh, unduly uh, exposed to, um, uh, to the headwinds. Now, the comment uh, by uh, Mr. Nona with regards to related parties about um, uh, looking into the, the disclosure, that definitely we'll look into. But I believe uh, probably uh, what, um, what uh, just instead of saying related party, we'll look into that and make sure that uh, by next AGM, all these issues will be well uh, addressed. So I think having said that, I want to assure you that uh, the, the board and management will continue to maintain a very strong oversight of the bank to ensure that uh, the, the performance is sustained, irrespective of uh, what we are going through currently. We we'll just hope to look at other areas of opportunity to keep the bank on a steady queue. Thank you very much, and then we'll continue with. <laughs> Having laid the audited financial statements before you in accordance with section 345 of the Companies and Allied Matters Act, 2004, thereby concluding item one on the agenda. We will now proceed to the other items on the agenda, which are items for which your vote is required. In accordance with the provisions of section 224, subsection 1A of the Companies and Allied Matters Act, I, as the chairman of this meeting, hereby call for a poll in respect of the remaining items on the agenda, except item six on elections to the statutory audit committee. In view of the fact that the resolutions before us today are ordinary resolutions, please note that a simple majority of votes will be required to pass each resolution. The representatives of the auditors shall act as the scrutineers. The registrars in liaison with scrutineers shall supervise the voting. Yes. Then we cannot proceed. We cannot proceed to do other things by uh, what's it called? Voting by you know, by poll. Yeah. So we have to receive the account. It's not too late. It's to receive. Hmm? It's to receive, not to lay. It's to receive. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> Yes. So I'm, I'm aware of the fact that the notice says to receive.
For the chairman has prerogative to override. Can he not? The eh? company secretary should tell us. Is it? Okay. It's, it's, it's told us to leave. So. Yeah. To move a motion, yes, yeah. Can, okay. Yeah, it's not here. Um. Can someone move the motion that we accept the account as presented by the auditors? Let me. That was omitted. Hi, the Timothy Adesina. I so move. Thank you. Can somebody second the motion? I write to second the motion. Okay, Sir Boniface. Thank you very much. So we will now put it to vote. So now the registrar and the uh, okay no okay. So can all the other members uh, indicate their acceptance? We all do. Thank you very much. Thank you, and my apologies for that uh, uh, omission. Thank you very much. I believe that you are each given an electronic voting device from accreditation by the registrars. I request that you use your device to cast your votes and now call on the registrars to explain the process for using the devices, the registrar. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, like uh, the common secretary said, we will receive the uh, 244 proxies and uh, those are, they are voted in advance for all the resolutions. But for those of us who are here uh, in person, when a poll is called, you press one to say yes, and press two for no or for against. One for for and two for against. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is the approval of dividend. In this regard, the directors are pleased to recommend a dividend of 20 Kobo to ordinary share for the 2009 financial year for the approval of the shareholders. I hereby call on a shareholder to move the resolution. Mike. Thank you, Elijah. Can somebody please second the motion? Okay, thank you, Chief Boniface. I will now put the resolution to the meeting by calling on you to vote on the resolution with your electronic devices. The poll has now opened, 30 seconds. Yeah. You press one for two against. Is that? Voting on this resolution will soon close. Can we? Nine seconds more. 
eight seconds, mm -hmm. seven, six, five, four seconds, three seconds, two seconds, one second. Pool has closed. Result. Okay. Voting on this resolution is now closed. Yeah. The registrar will display the results on the screen. We have 249 people voting for, none against. That's 100%. 11.9 billion chairs voting for, that is 100%. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mm. Thank you. I hereby declare the resolution carried. The next item on the agenda is election of directors. Separate resolutions will be proposed for the election of each director. Will a shareholder move the resolution for election of Mr. Obaro Odegi as a director? Why are you people so far away? Hello. Hi, Chief Timothy Adesinyan. I so propose Mr. Obaro Odege as a director. Thank you very much. Will a shareholder please second this resolution? Order. I told you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Elijah Ayodele Kudais. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Voting on this, uh, I will now put the resolution to the meeting by calling on you to vote with your electronic devices. Hold up, open. 30 seconds. Six seconds more. Five, three, two, one. Voting, voting on this resolution is now closed. The registrars will display the results on the screen. 241 people voted for, three are against. 98.77% voted for. In terms of shareholding, 96.42% voted for. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Registrar. I hereby declare the resolution carried. Will a shareholder move the resolution for election of Mr. Golan or Joshua as a director? Yes, sir. Hi, Benga Edo. Propose Mr. Gola Hon as a executive, as director of the bank. Thank you. Will a shareholder please second this resolution? I write to second the motion that Mr. Gola Ham Joshua be elected as a director of a great company. Okay, Zia Boniface. Thank you very much. I will now put the resolution to the meeting by calling on you to vote on the resolution with your electronic devices. Voting us open. Nine seconds, eight, seven, six, four, two, one. Okay, voting on this resolution is now closed. The registrars will display the results on the screen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For the election of Mr. Golan Joshua as a director, we had uh, 242 people voting, two again, uh, two, 242 people voting for, that's 99.18. In terms of shareholding, 11.33 billion, which is 96.42%. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Now, Mr. Hassan Imam, will a shareholder move the resolution for election of Mr. Hassan Imam as a director? 
Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, sir, I, Chief Timothy Adesinian, I so move that Mr. Hassan Iman be appointed an, as an executive director. Thank you very much. Will a shareholder please second this resolution? Madam. I rise to second that resolution that uh, Mr. Hassan Iman elected as executive director. My name is Elijah Ayodele Thank you, Madam. I will now put the resolution to the meeting by calling on, on you to vote with your electronic device, devices. Poll is now open. 30 seconds. Seven more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Police closed. Voting on this resolution is now closed. The registrars will display the results on the screen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 241. 241 shareholders voted for, three against. That is 98.77%. In terms of shareholding, 11.331 voted for, which is 96.42% of shareholding. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. I hereby declare the resolution carried. Election of Alhaji Issa Mohammed Inwa. Will a shareholder move the resolution for election of Alhaji Mohammed Issa Inwa as a director? Boniface. I hereby move that Alhaji Issa Mohammed Inwa be elected as independent non executive director of our company. Okay, Zia Boniface, move that motion. Thank you very much. I so second. I'm Chief Timothy Adesinian. Thank you I very so. much. I will now put the resolution to the meeting by calling on you to vote with your electronic devices. So we let Alaji Issa Mohammed pull us now open. Nine more seconds. Eight, seven, six, five, three, two, one. Poll is closed. Voting on this resolution is now closed. The registrars will display the result on the screen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 243 people voted for, one against. That is 99.59%. Holdings, 11.7 billion. That's about 100%. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. I hereby declare the resolution carried. Re-election of directors. The next item is re-election of directors. As I am up for the election, I hereby recuse myself from handling this item and yield the chair to Otumba Sheni Adetu. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Good day, shareholders. Please be informed that separate resolutions will be proposed for the re election of each director. Will a shareholder please move the resolution for the re-election of Mr. Ernest Ebi as a director? I bring I do. I move for the election of uh, if Mr. Ernest Ebi. Mr. Ernest Ebi, the chairman, as director. Thank you very much, sir. Will the shareholder please second this resolution? I, Chief Timothy Adesina, second the appointment of Mr. Ernest Ebi as a director. Thank you very much, sir. I will now put the resolution to the meeting by calling on you to vote with your electronic devices. Over to you, register, please. Thank you.
Zijn acting chairman. Pool is now open. Nine seconds more, eight seconds, seven seconds, four, three, pool is closed. Thank you. Voting on the resolution is now closed. The registrars will display the results on the screen. Chairman, sir, 243 people voted for, six against, 97.59%. In terms of shareholding, 11.249% um, billion. That is about 94%. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. I hereby declare the resolution carried. Having been duly re-elected, I hereby yield the chair to the chairman, Mr. Ernest Ebi. Chairman, sir. Thank you. Otumba Sheni Adetu for a good job. I also wish to thank you as shareholders for the confidence reposed in me as a director and chairman. Thank you very much. Will a shareholder move the resolution for the election of Mr. Michael Okeke as a director? Alaja. I rise to move the motion. My name is Alaja Ayodelekuda. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Will somebody second the All motion? Right. I, Timothy Adesina, support the appointment of Mr. Michael Okeke as an executive director, as a non-executive director. Thank you. I will now put the resolution to the meeting by calling on you to vote with your electronic devices. Poll is open. Nine seconds more. Eight, seven, six seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Poll is closed. Voting on this resolution is now closed. The registrars will display the results on the screen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 243 people voted for six against. That's 97.59%. 11.249 billion in shares. That's about 94%. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. I hereby declare the resolution carried. The next item is to authorize the directors to fix the remuneration of the external auditors. In accordance with Section 357, Subsection 2 of the Companies and Allied Matters Act 2004, the external directors, Mr. Ernst and Young, have indicated their willingness to continue in office as the bank's auditors until the expiration of their tenure in May 2021. Will a shareholder move the resolution to authorize the directors? to fix the remuneration of the auditors for the 2020 financial year. Yes, Chairman. I hereby move that the directors be authorized to fix the remuneration of the auditors for the same year. Okay, Sir Boniface, move the motion. Thank you very much. The shareholder, please second this resolution. Chairman, I rise to second that resolution. My name, my name once again is Elijah Kuda Isayadele. Thank you. Thank you very much. I will now put the resolution to the meeting by calling on you to vote with your electronic devices. Will I open? Nine more seconds. Seven. 
four, three, two, one, zero. Pool is closed. Voting on this resolution is now closed. The registrar will display the results on the screen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 245 people voted for, for against. That gives us 98.39%. In terms of shareholding, 11.67 billion, which is 97.34%. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. I hereby declare the resolution carried. Election of members of the Strategic Audit Committee. The next item is election of members of the to the Statutory Audit Committee. Please note that a Statutory Audit Committee has been established in compliance with Section 359, Subsection 5 of the Companies and Allied Matters Act 2004. The committee is made up of three representatives of the shareholders and three members of the Board of Directors. The current shareholders representing, uh, shareholder representatives are Chief Frank Ong, who is here, Dr. Christian Wania, and Mr. Innocent Moore, while the board representatives are Alahaji Isa Inua, Mr. Alex Ojuku, and Mr. Michael Okeke. As stipulated in the notice of the meeting, any shareholder may nominate another shareholder for election to the Statutory Audit Committee by giving notice in writing of such nomination to the company secretary at least 21 days before the annual general meeting. The CBN in its Code of Corporate Governance for banks and discount houses stipulates that measures of the statutory, members of the statutory audit committees should be knowledgeable in internal control processes, accounting, and financial matters. Forty nomination letters were received for election of shareholders representative to the statutory audit committee. Of the 40 nominations received, 24 were disqualified because the nominees curriculum vitae were not attached or were attached, did not indicate that the nominees were knowledgeable in financial and accounting matters as required by applicable regulations. The affected nominees were notified of why their nominations were declined. Consequently, 16 valid nominations were received for election of shareholders' representatives to the Statutory Audit Committee. Of the 16 valid nominations, 13 nominees subsequently withdrew, leaving three nominees. The, nomin the three nominees are Chief Frank Ong, Dr. Christian Wania, and Mr. Innocent Moore. Premised on the foregoing, there is no need for an election, and I hereby declare that Chief Frank Ong, Dr. Christian Wania, and Mr. Innocent Moore are returned as members of the Statutory Audit Committee. Thank you. This brings to a close the formal business of the day. On behalf of the Board of Directors, I thank you for your attendance and participation at this 32nd Chairman, AGM. Chairman, observations, sir. Observations, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think for proper perspective, you know, you, since the directors have three and the three for shareholders, you know, I was expecting you to move a motion. Then we we'll second it, you know, and ratify the appointment. That's all. Move for the motion. for the statutory audit committee. Yes, yes. Move a motion there. We'll okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I put this. Can somebody? You move. I will second here. Okay. I move the resolution that these three nominees, Chief Frank O, Dr. Christian Wania, and Mr. Innocent Moore, be and elected. And the directors. And the directors. And our own directors be accepted by shareholders and members of the Statutory Audit Committee.
I second the motion, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. And on this note, this brings to a close the former business of the day. On behalf of the Board of Directors, I thank you for your attendance and participation at this 32nd AGM of our bank. As you depart, I enjoin you all to stay safe and do your part to prevent the spread of COVID-19. I'll call on Chief Adesia to lead us in closing prayer. Chief. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for bringing us to a successful end of this meeting. We thank you for all your guidance, for your protection on all of us. Father, we are appealing and begging you, O oh Lord, to please forgive us our sins throughout the world. The pandemic that is now ravaging the whole, the whole world is as a result of our sins. Father, we are your creatures. There is nowhere we can go. And you, Lord, said you don't want the death of sinners, but their repentance. Father, teach us to repent. Teach us to worship you, God, and not mammon. Father, we appeal that you will grant this country your grace and let our leaders know the right action to take. And we shall be going to our different homes. We appeal that you, Lord, will guide us and give us grace to stay safe. These are other things we ask for in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. And so the man came up to me and was like, are you really the person? Really? <laughs> so hilarious. And that's so funny. So I told him, I said, yeah, that's me. That's how we roll, you know. <laughs> Don't so worry, I'll pay. pay. <laughs> <laughs> you can take the next one. Make any forex transfers to any bank in the world. Bank easy while chatting with Fidelity Flash Game. Enjoy awesome payment options in your Fidelity virtual card. LPS, M Visa, and modified transaction limits. You can also do bulk payments and many more. Enjoy a world of ease with Fidelity e Banking Services. Dial star 770 hash or download the online banking app. Fidelity Banking Online. Banking that suits your lifestyle. Stay safe. What's so Meditate. good about Fidelity Online Banking? Hmm, let's see. Aside the fact that it's a robust self-service system with advanced cyber protection with biometric verification, it is easy to use, accessible, and convenient. You can pay bills and buy airtime. Fidelity Online Banking is built to give you a delightful banking experience. And with our new upgrade, you can now transfer foreign currency to anyone, anywhere in the world. Simply log on to Fidelity Online, input your username and password, select DOM account for transfer, click on FX transfer to designated bank, input the appropriate beneficiary bank details, SWIFT, sort code and routing number, click on make transfer, and voila, it's done. 
So wherever you are, wherever you go, Fidelity Online has got you covered. Fidelity Online, banking that suits your lifestyle. Download the Fidelity Online app today. Stay safe. Maintain social distance. We are Fidelity. We keep our word. What's so good about Fidelity?